Welcome to the Zorich Podcast. I am Chris Zorich, and on today's show, we have the inspiration for the iconic movie Rudy, Emmy Award winner, motivational speaker, Joliet Catholic alum, and creator of the Rise Above with Rudy podcast, the Rudy Rudiger. Rudy, what is up, man? Hey, Chris, what a humble moment this is having Chris Zorich. A great one. <laughs> Honor me. <laughs> Not are you kidding me? Not about me. You you have here. You are the, one of the greatest ever to play at Notre Dame with the Bears as well. And here I am, just a little guy, just trying to contribute to the success of all you great ones. And it's an <laughs> honor. I'm telling you, it, it's an honor. It, you know, even to have this moment with you is pretty cool. So I want to thank you for this moment. Well, thank you very much. And, and I remember way back when kind of hanging out in the condo and eating barbecue yeah. and hanging out and talking yeah, you, about Notre Dame. Do you remember stuff. that? <laughs> oh, yeah. That, that was many moons ago. Many moons you know, ago. You know, there's a story to that. You know, as you were hanging out, you know, uh, my God, Jerome Bettis and all of them would come over. And oh, yeah. uh, Aaron Taylor would cook. And, and then I get a call from the athletic department telling me that uh, you can't talk about this movie thing to our athletes. No, are you serious? Yeah, yeah. And they maybe sign a letter. Uh, if I talked or had the athletes kind of, you know, how they were real touchy with, yeah. with the athletes. And I said, look, man, uh, we're just eating. That's all we're doing and uh, getting rid of the stress. They need to get rid of their stress. And we laugh and have fun and right. anything of that. And, and uh, they said, if you talk about this movie, we're going to bar you from this university. And they, they were really serious, so they made me sign this letter never to talk about this movie with the athletes. I understood where they were coming from. Uh -huh. It's a real distraction. I get it. But they didn't understand what I was going for. And that's, you know, they kind of looked at me who, uh, like a poser type of guy. Okay. And, 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 you know, when you look, and that's how you are looked at as a walk-on, by the way. Uh, and, and I don't blame them for that. To be mm -hmm. honest, because here they're recruiting the best of the best. And here comes Rudy, a 25 year old ex a veteran trying to be part of this Notre Dame football team. They didn't understand the journey. And I don't didn't expect them to. Sure. But what I had, what they didn't have was a dream. I had a dream. I had the want to 100 percent committed to the university and to their football team academically as far as. And they did not understand that. They just thought, wow, what is up with this kid? And, and again, you can't blame people who see you like that. And you can't allow them to uh, uh, maneuver or manipulate where you're going to go either. And I didn't allow that because in the Navy, um, the Navy really helped me understand because I was a little older, a little more mature. And I understood what I had to do. But more sure. important, well, this is really interesting because yeah. uh, I kind of want to dive into that. And yeah. I want to start kind of going way, way back um, a little bit before Julia Catholic, I guess, I, I guess growing up with, I mean, a huge family. I mean, you had 13 yeah. siblings. What was that like? Well, that, that, you know what? It's can't, kind of, my mother was so organized, very normal because uh, we all had chores, right? Okay. Very very structured. Everyone ate at the same time. All 16 people would eat every night for dinner. And if you misbehave at that dinner table, boy, I'll tell you, you got whacked. Or you had extra chores. And if you brought home a bad report card, you had extra, extra chores. Oh I God. always had extra, extra chores. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I became good. My, my big chore was helping my mother do the laundry. Okay. When you did the laundry, during my time, we'd go in this real old time uh, washing machine, and you wring it out, and then you put it in a bag, you take it out the clothesline, put the clothespins up, bring yeah. it out all stiff, fold it up. I mean, I got pretty good at that. And never <laughs> forget how good I got at folding clothes. And, but it paid off because when I went in the Navy, they made me a uh, leader of the, of the shipmates in boot camp because I was so good at folding underwear. Wow. Is that crazy? Wow. And shiny shoes and making a rack. But, but what was the point? The point was my dad was building character in me. 
Sure. And, and and he was also building accountability, responsibility, and pride. Where in school, they were doing the opposite, Chris. They were stealing your joy, not building character. They mm. were pounding you down, making you feel in, inept. They made you feel inferior. They made you feel stupid. And I have a learning disorder called dyslexia. Mm -hmm. So I had a hard time doing what they wanted me to do. And boy, right. they make me feel bad about that. And it really upset me. And the point where it made me angry. I got so angry, I said, I'm going to show them. So I channeled all that anger in a positive force. Now, listen to what I'm saying. This is important. Don't use your anger in a negative way. Use your anger in a positive way. Especially when I got out of the Navy, I knew how to channel that anger in a positive way. And bingo, it worked. All I had to do was refocus, eliminate all the goofy thinkers, all the bad thoughts, all the goofy people, all the goofy information, just focus on what you wanted. Now I have the why. To get a why is very hard. Sure. But because we're all distracted, like you, you know, just like Notre Dame football. When they feel you're distracting that team, they're, they're getting you out of there, mm -hmm. right? Well, I was not a distraction. I was more of what they were looking for, character you know, and pride and a commitment to that program. I didn't have to run the fastest or be the strongest, but by goodness, I played with the best of the best and got beat up by the best of the best. I'll never forget coming out of practice one day, and, and uh, Dave Casper, great All-American from yeah. Notre Dame, he said, why are you out here, man? <laughs> he didn't. He just didn't know. He was a good guy. He just didn't understand it. And Donardo, Jerry Donardo, Orphan Cigar said, because he kicks ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah, Donardo was awesome. And uh, because I put out 100%, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and, and made the other guys work hard, even though it wasn't, but they still had to work. And that was the goal. I didn't want to be the best. I just wanted to contribute. And that was a hard thing uh, to, for people to understand. Because, you know, once I made the decision going to the military, that's what it became, to contribute. All become one. All become brothers. Right. And it, there was no diversion. There was no devise. There was no division. You didn't know what the heck the guy was. As long as he was your brother, he was going to protect you. You didn't ask him his religion, his race, or color. You were brothers, man. Right. And it's like a football team. Same mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. It's a brotherhood. And people don't – that's a great – that locker room is awesome when you have that – that's what I miss the most, by the way. It's a brotherhood in that locker room. And some of the guys didn't like you. Really? Let's face it. Well, because they, they didn't understand you. And I don't blame him. So I had to prove myself in the bingo box. <laughs> which, which, which is what I'm going to talk about before yeah. I get the bingo box, though. Um, so tell me about where you kind of learned this this drive to kind of never give up. I mean, was it well, on the playing you know, field at Joe Catholic? or Because I'm going to go back then. I mean, did yeah, everybody I in the town play there? I had one of the greatest coaches ever at Joe Catholic, Gordy Gillespie. Okay, right. Yeah, he's a legend. Legend. Not only a legend. What a great human being he was. He always made me feel good and powerful on that football okay. field. That's the only place I felt safe was on that foot, not in the classroom, in that football field. Because Gordy would say, "Where to go, Rudy? Where to go? Let's do it." He never told me what I was doing wrong. He's always saying, "Rudy, that's good. That's good. You'll get it better. Don't worry about it. You'll get better." You know, he always talked to you like that, okay. and I love that. In the classroom, total opposite. So the football field was my total. Uh, safe zone. Mm -hmm. And Gordy gave me that drive. He made me believe I could become anybody I wanted to be. And when you're growing up, you watch a Notre Dame football game as a little Catholic boy, and you see your dad watching Notre Dame football. You see him working in stress and all this chaos in the in the world. And he's work, trying to work three jobs. He, but he perks up when Notre Dame wins. I said, that is a gift I want to give my father, one of his sons. Wow. For Notre Dame. That was a far-fetched dream. Sure. I mean, it was so far-fetched, it was like reaching for the stars. But yet I believe. Now, here's the key to that. It could be so far away, but yet possible. The impossible became possible because I learned about what, what my realistic goals were. Mm -hmm. A lot of us have unrealistic mm -hmm. goals, realistic goals. And again, that all comes from the Navy. That, that's, I always go back to that boot camp. Folding your underwear, folding your socks, right. shining your shoes, making your rack, 
you know, learning your general quarters, uh, orders, and all this stuff, and you became a leader. I said, wait a minute. I was no leader in high school, and yet I'm a leader. But on that football field, Gordy made me a leader. Does that make mm. sense? Absolutely. So when you're Absolutely. around positive people who understand what's important in life, like character and commitment, things change. You know, I watch these kids today. My son plays hockey, and, you know, and the coaches, all they want to do is win. Where, where's the development of that kid? Right. 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 Where's the development? This kid doesn't have to win right now. This kid has to learn about, hey, who he is, what he is, what a teammate is, what hard work and work ethic. The greatest thing I ever said to me by one of the greatest athletes ever, the late Kobe Bryant, courted me one day at a basketball game. When my daughter was ready to sing the national anthem. He asked me, come walking over to me after he was going through his routine. He goes through a routine every basketball game. Okay. He shoots around the horn. If he hits the rim, he starts over. He has to swish every shot. Wow. He may be out there an hour, may be out there two. As long as he does his routine without hitting that rim. And I'm watching this, and my son's with me, and all of a sudden, he looks over towards, because no one else is in the arena but my daughter and the producers. And, right. and, and he looked and said, hey, are you Rudy? Mm. Rudy Rudiger. I said, wow. what? I said, yeah. He said, the real Rudy? I said, yes, sir. <laughs> and he comes over with his basketball, Chris. It gets very emotional. Now, watch this. I become the star all of a sudden. Wow. He becomes the admirer. He said, is this your son? I said, yes, it is. He says, your dad's my hero. Ooh. I didn't know what to say. To wow. And he said, without hesitation, if it wasn't for your dad, I wouldn't be out here today. His movie is my go-to film. Wow. What it taught me was this. Work ethic. Get better each day. Get better. That means you got to work hard and get better. And, and when you get knocked down, you get back up. And that's why I'm out here shooting this basketball. Mm. My teammates are in the locker room complaining or talking about goofy stuff. I'm a, I want to win. Mm. I have the talent and skill to win. I have to be the leader, so I have to get out here and work. You gave me that, Rudy. Wow. 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 What, what do you say to that? I mean, that has to be an what amazing What do you say to that, Chris? You say, boy, am I glad I didn't listen to those boneheads <laughs> that told me. You don't belong here at Notre Dame. Don't talk to those athletes. And by the way, when we talked to you guys, it was relieving the stress you guys were under. Sure. You know, sure. It, it looked at a different light. When you talked to D. Bob, and we told great stories, and it was fun. And, and, and you looked at Notre Dame differently at a much different level than how you're looking at it as a you know athlete then. Because going to Notre Dame is not easy. As so, an yeah, exactly. Oh, challenging. And just to get through it is hard. So you need that stress release. And that's what we were trying to give. And that was kind of like my gift, but I was put down for it. But afterwards, they saw it. The guy who made me sign that letter saw me 10 years later at an no airport. Way. And he apologized. What did he said? No, really? Yeah. And he hugged me. Here's what he said Rudy, I am so sorry. I did not understand who you were. I was influenced by other people. I was poisoned by mm. other people about you. I said, mm. don't worry about that. I mean, I didn't hold anything. I said, no, no. He said, as my wife died, I held her in my hands. And she talked about three people, and you were one of them. It's how wow. you treated her like a princess, like a queen. Because I was running a car dealership at the time, and I would take care of the coaches and sure. athletic directors. And when they came, man, I was honored just to take care of them. You know? <laughs> and uh, that, to me, told me a lot about that man. He was willing to show his emotion and show his, his redemption at that time. And I said, how many people would do that? Right. You know, Notre Dame is a special place. There are some poison people there, of course, but there's more good than bad. Sure. And, and that's what I wanted to bring out in that movie, the good of Notre Dame, the spiritual, that spirit side of it, the spirituality. It cleanses your thoughts, cleanses your mind. You you feel very powerful. Yeah, you got to deal with the academics. You got to deal with the social. You got to deal with all the things that young men deal with. Right. But... If you deal with the right people there, they get you through it. 
Mm -hmm. And some of the kids lost their way. But there was one kid on that football team, Chris, by the name of Ronnie Collins. I'll never forget it. I can't okay. I want to quit. I said, Ronnie, you can't quit, bro. I'm out here getting my butt beat every day, and you're on a scholarship. You get, you get a meal. Wow. You get books. You get clap. Me, I got a scrap, man. And, and, dude, this is a great place to be. And, you know, he didn't quit. You know, about, I think, 10 years after the movie was over, maybe 12, I get a call from his family. No way. To send a jersey to put in his coffin. Yeah. Ooh. Wow. Well, I get the chills. Wow. Coach, you think about that. Those guys who look at people's heart and stuff. You know, people look at people's talent a lot. You know, that's what you have to recruit. But when you look at heart and talent, it becomes a whole different ball game. You had both. And that's why you were one of the great ones that know that because you had passion, heart, commitment, and for you had all the things an athlete needed to go to Notre Dame. And sometimes I say, boy, how come we're not recruiting a Chris Storages anymore? How come we're not recruiting those type of kids, right? right. And, 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 and I tried to explain that to coaches, today's coaches, but they look at me like I have eight heads. And I don't get it. I just don't get it. Well, but, you know, it's a little different because when and, – and you had and, – and I learned about your, your legendary coach from – high school coach from yeah. Tom Thayer, right? Yeah, Tom well, Thayer, one of the great Yeah. And he, and he had a chance to uh, play for Coach Gordy too. But it's so interesting because my high school coach was cut from kind of the same cloth he was kind of the old school guy. Yeah. Uh, it was it was all about character. I mean, we had to say yes, ma'am, no, sir, yeah, yeah. Uh, to to everyone. Uh, we had to come on time. I mean, these were things that we were taught as a young kid. And so my question was: I mean, you had a chance to kind of hear you saw Notre Dame and you wanted to want to go to Notre Dame with your dad, but what happened kind of when you're in high school? Kind of all these times where I mean, you aren't just born a leader. No. Well, you know, well, Chris, here, we all have leadership skills in us, mm -hmm. all right? People want your – what do you mean a leader? What, identify a leader to me. Hey, a leader could be that maintenance guy. Right, exactly. That, that, or that secretary. Mm -hmm. that, that shows gratitude. That's a leader. That right. shows spirit. That's a leader. You don't have to have all the answers to be a leader. You, you know, being a captain of a Notre Dame football team, I, I think they don't understand how to pick a captain, but sometimes they do. Mm -hmm. When they pick a captain at Notre Dame, he believes in Notre Dame. Right. He believes in every teammate. See, Ross Browner, Willie Fry, all those guys believed in me, man. Luther Bradley, all those guys believed in me. They went to bat for me, you mm -hmm. know. You know, when, when uh, Eddie Barra went in uh, talk to the coaches about dressing me, you know, the, there was one guy who got up his uniform was Pat Sarf. Because right. hey, he said it was senior day and Eric Parsegian promised all seniors to dress for their final home game. Well, you know, that year Divine came in, they cut that back, that dress list to 60. Oh, it used wow. to be a hundred. Now right. there's 50 kids that are not going to dress. I'm not going to be one of them. Mm. But because of the uh, respect I earned and the gratitude that people saw in me, and they wanted me, and they saw my passion. They would not let that go, some of these guys. But I almost quit when I didn't see my name on that dress. I'm going to tell you who saved it. Was that Rudy Johnson, the janitor? Really? Yes. I come because I live in the ACC, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he saw me. He said, where are you going, brother? Are you going to practice? I said, no, man, I quit. I'll never forget the look on his face. You've been out there two years, and you're going to quit? Really? Right, right. You didn't understand it. I said, Rudy, you don't understand. And anyhow, we created a couple characters in him mm -hmm. because I put, you know, the guys who wanted to quit, the guys who didn't quit, the guys right. who helped me. So I wanted to create a real character with that janitor. Okay. Rudy was so simple and so awesome. And I saw him. I said, why should I go back out there, man? He says, I don't know, man. I just don't see you quitting. And he was walking. I said, "What? are you all right? So why are you limping? Limping? He said, I've been limping for 20 years. I said, I haven't noticed. He says, well, he says, what happened to you, man? He said, I had sugar diabetes. I lost my leg. I have a prosthesis. He said, but I love coming to this place every day. I'm at Notre Dame every day. 
And I said, yeah, I'm playing with the best every day. You're right. So I'm getting back out there. Type of. Wow. And we created that moment in the movie, but we created it a little differently. But that's mm. what saved me, guys like that, the little guys, mm. you know. Mm. But you need those people in life to push you through that tough, those tough moments. Because sure. sometimes sure. the big guys don't see it. Right. Right. It, it, they just don't see that level because they're so what focused on what winning, mm -hmm. uh, winning. And yeah, it's important to win, but I think it's more important to win in life. Right. Because right. I, I guarantee you, you know, this as a fact, when you meet someone 10 years from, they're going to ask you, who'd you play for? Notre Dame. No, they're not going to ask if you won a national championship. Right. Exactly. They're not going to ask if you won the Super Bowl. Right. right? You play for the Bears? Holy right. cow! Right. That's awesome. See, they're all the, they know what it takes to get there. Sure. They know how hard it is to get there. That's what they respect. And we confuse that with our TV and our money and our you know status of players, and they get confused. I was talking to Antonio Brown not too long ago, right before he, he went back to the uh, um, with Tom Brady. Okay. Uh, great kid, by the way. Okay. Misunderstood. And, yeah. and, and I said, look, I said, and I said to him, I said, Antonio, I was doing an autograph saying the guy, and I'm he, he's just a great kid. I said, you made a lot of bonehead choices. <laughs> we all do, dude. Don't worry right. about it. Right. But give the guys who believe in you. That's going to be your secret. Just go with them. Don't go to the team that's going to say you're coming here for them. Go. And Tom Brady was your answer, dude, because he believed in you. Mm -hmm. And you responded in a positive way. Now they won the Super Bowl, you know? With guys, you know how he won and why he won. Right. And a lot of people say, oh, Tom, Tom Brady picks the underdog kid that's got the grit, the grind, the gratitude, the passion, that's going to do whatever it takes. Sometimes it's a star that doesn't give you that effort. Mm -hmm. It's that other, you know that. And, and that's why Rudy works. The movie, because that's what come, comes out of the movie. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And I want to talk, talk a little bit about kind of what you were able to to learn when you went into the Navy. And yeah, was course. it just a choice, hey, you know, let me go? Or was it, you know, hey, college, it's expensive. Well, uh, I'm not sure was, you can do it. Chris, it was none of that. It was, I, I'm third of my class from the bottom of high school. I'm not going to college. I'm that. going to the mills. I'm right. going to the power plant. And Vietnam was happening then. That was the choice. I'm not getting drafted. I'm going to go down and talk to the Navy recruiter because I'm going to join. I'll never forget my consul. This is bad. He said, you got to be smart to go to the Navy, young man. I didn't. I ignored him. I said, no, that's where I want to go. So I went mm -hmm. to the recruiter. I said, how smart do you have to be to get in here? He kind of looked at me. He said, what do you mean? He said, well, my, my high school counsel said, I have to be smart to go to the Navy. He said, well, that's a compliment. But here, I'll show you how smart you have to be. Pull out a mirror. He said, breathe okay. in this mirror. And I did. And he said, see, you made it. <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> I said, you're kidding. He says, no, what about these aptitude tests they say you need to take? Oh, those are skill set tests. We want to know where to put you. And I'll tell you, the monkey jumped off my back. Wow. And, and I became a yeoman on the presidential command ship, coach. Okay. So I'm now I'm with the greatest leaders in the world. And I'm working with them side by side. I'm going, where is my high school bonehead, right? Right, right, right. right? That's where the confidence came. But boot camp is what gave me the confidence. When that drill instructor made me the leader, you start dreaming again. See, confidence is how you dream. Sure. When you get confidence, you dream. And then when you get more, you dream bigger. But you take the small steps to get to the big dream. And that's what was important for me. Rudy, first things first, like Notre Dame, junior college, first semester, second semester, mm -hmm. third semester. But every time you got turned down, you don't get upset. You go to Notre Dame, you say, what more do I need to do? And right. every time you did that, they got confidence in you. And I ended Notre Dame at the toughest time because they were bringing in girls at the time transfer okay. students. Okay. So the spots for transfer students were kind of tightening up. So I had to build relationships with everybody. I didn't know that. Way. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, I built relationships with the student body at Notre Dame and I stuck in the bingo box when I was at Holy Cross. 
And I was on the student government when I was there. Well, well, you have to share that story with us yeah. because for the folks who don't know, uh, the Bengal Bouts, gosh, that was created, I think, in the 1930s or 40s. Well, Newt Rockney created it to get his okay. name. Mm-hmm. He went to Nappy and Nappy put it. And we raised the money for the Bangladesh missions. Right, right, exactly. And so it is, and it's going to this day. So it's been around forever. And regular students from athletes to anyone who wants right. to participate can. And so I, I just kind of wanted to give a framework for folks. Yeah, it's the dorms against the dorms mm-hmm. is what it was. And it was awesome. I mean, we had 10,000 people come to these matches. Wow. Muhammad Ali would come to it. He lived in uh, Flint, not far from the campus. Okay. He would come in and, and, and I mean, it was great. And I th- I think one of the greatest spots I saw was uh, Jim Browner and Doug Becker. Holy mm. and, and Ross Browner and Ken McAfee. Holy smoke. Wow, I would have paid to have seen that. that, that oh, man, it, was a, it was awesome. But those are great guys. Ken McAfee's still my friend today. Ross is still my friend. Jimmy mm. Brown every now and then. Doug, you know, Becker, you know, see these guys. I mean, those guys respect you, man, because they know what it takes to get in the bingo box. Right. They know what it takes to go out the field every day and work hard and not play and not knowing you're even going to dress. That, to me, when you meet leaders like that, see, that's what I'm talking about, leaders. Right. Uh, they're leaders in life. Mm-hmm. And, 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 that, and people uh, misrepresent leadership. Leadership could be any level. There's many different levels of leadership. And, and by the way, you were a great leader at Notre Dame. And, uh, you know, I cannot say how hard you worked, how you put yourself on the line. That's what I did. I was I, I, My attitude was I'm going to Notre Dame and I'm going to burn the boat, if that makes sense to you. You know, you sail to an island, you burn your boat, it means you can't go back. Right, exactly. I'm not going back. There's no way. They didn't understand that, man. And they didn't understand that will, that passion. And in the same way with football practice. But my heart was broken when Divine left, when Divine came in. Right. And left because of that goal. Uh, right. Or season gave us. And Divine, well, Divine well, did not well, like walk ons, by the way. Oh, let's see. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. That. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, he uh, he it was a, he divided the team, and we had to go. I had to go to him because I'm an older guy. I said, Coach, this is this is not working at Notre Dame like this. And he respected that, by the way. So he and I became real close. He would always come to me for advice. Okay. And, and because I was an older guy, right. he looked at me. He said, I don't have any friends here. You're the only one. I said, Coach, you don't need friends. What you need is respect. That's what you need, man. And, and once you got respect, you can do anything you want here. And so don't try to come here and prove yourself. Get this team. Bring them together. Have everybody eat together. Be together. And, and, and then he saw, you know, Johnny Rowland, uh, uh, my guy, great. And, you know, and uh, there were some great coaches he brought underneath him. Francis Pay, All these guys are just great human beings. Wow. And uh, Divine was a brilliant, brilliant manager. He knew how to put the right people around his team. Okay. Yeah. But he had to be schooled. And thank God, you know, he, he listened to me. And uh, I think that's one of – he liked me. He wanted me to play once he knew I was dressing. He, but he wanted, awesome. me, he wanted to put me on offense towards the end. said, no, <laughs> I'm a defensive player. And Frank Alaco was a quarterback, and he scored. And that's the only reason I played. Wow. Well, well, hold on. So, so yeah. talk a little bit about the, the Bengal Bouts again. I mean, sure. how did you? Why did you want to participate in that? I mean, was it well, something that? Yeah, the, the Bengal Bouts was a place to prove yourself and get respect. Okay. Because okay. every everybody, I mean, it was a big tournament. All the students would come. If you were a Bengal Bout Jack on campus, you're the man. <laughs> <laughs> you're the man. Especially wore that championship club, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, you're. Oh man, you don't mess with that guy. <laughs> so I fought two football players uh, during my – and I became the champion. I was a bingo player. Really? Fighter. Yeah. And now, a brother did, up. My did junior, they by, do they go by weight class? Or? They went by weight class. I was okay. late every weight. Okay. And, uh, I, and I, uh, I fought some awesome guys. And, uh, but make a long story short, I won the bingo bouts. Okay. And I, I beat a Tommy Bake. I'll never forget. He was a halfback. At Notre Dame, and he's going to kick my butt. I said no, no, no. Well, I don't think he saw the day of light after I finished. 
Oh my God, that <laughs> is hilarious. Faster than where his buddies, and I got so much respect. Tommy Bake is awesome. He's a wonderful leader, and he became a big pilot in the military. Great guy. I think he flies for Delta. I don't know, but anyway, look, they're great human beings. Sure, right. And I got the respect. That's where I earned my respect. And those guys were going out. They were seniors. They were going out. So I kind of got the respect. And they allowed me to come back for my senior year, uh, the coaches that they kept, uh, Joe Yanto and a couple other guys they kept. Okay. They said, we got to keep this Rudy guy on the team. He has, he's, he has a lot of spirit. And they kept me, and they invited me back for fall ball. If they don't invite you back, you're not in. Right. right? All right. I got a jersey. They give you a jersey. You get in the in the in the, in the book, right? Uh, and, uh, yeah, and absolutely. Yeah. Name on your jersey until you play. <laughs> right. That's great. And absolutely. I got that yeah. jersey that Friday night, that Saturday morning, without my name on it. I said, "Oh man, I'll never forget the managers coming up to me. Rudy will put it on after the game. Don't worry about it." Oh and my they, they handed me my jersey and helmet after the season, and, and so that was quite an honor. Now, you also – were you a GA for Divine as well? I was a graduate assistant. Coach Divine asked me to stay on a year. I thought I would look at coaching. But, okay. you know, I saw the time they put in. I said, ah, this isn't for me. <laughs> you know, I, I'm going to go – I'm going to go south. So I saw Eric Parsegian, believe it or not. I said, Coach. I said, you going to coach, Rudy? I said, no, Coach, I don't know what I'm – I said, you go sell insurance. You'll be good at it. Go see one of my boys. He he's uh, he played for me at Northwestern. He owns a big insurance company in Chicago. Tell him I sent you. So I go, Tom, I'll never forget this. Uh, um, uh, I go to Wacker Drive, the building. Oh, my God. Pat Ryan was a big guy. Yeah. And he owns his – I mean, he donates a lot to Northwestern, and I'll never forget, I went for the interview. I was in there a couple hours, and the guy says, we'll get back there. He says, no, I need to know now. He says, well, I'll be honest with you. I don't think we're going to take you. So well, what do I need to get this job? He said, you got to have experience to do this work. I said, okay, great. How do you get it? you got to be around it. So I got it. So I went back to the lobby, and I stood there till like 8 o'clock at night, and this guy comes walking out, and he looks, he says, Hey, didn't I talk to you earlier today? You told me to stick around, so I am. Oh, that's great. And he said, wow. you're hired. <laughs> <laughs> that's terrific. Yeah. So really? that, the Rudy way was the dumbest way. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't the most, it wasn't a way I want anybody to do. It's like making a movie. I would not want anybody to go through what I went through to get this movie made. Mm -hmm. No one. Mm -hmm. But because of what I saw and what I felt, I wouldn't let no one steal that from me. Sure. And, and, and just, yeah. so now share with the audience a little bit about the 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 challenges you face and be I mean, so so you have this idea, right? I mean, where does it well, from? I, I had an inspiration, Chris. Uh -huh. You want an idea. You had a great story as well. Your story was more of a better story than mine. But I saw you came to know it under great hardship. And, and uh, you had hardship while you were at Notre Dame. And mm -hmm. That's when you lost your mother. That's tough, man. Right. And how you grew up. But me, I don't know. I, I, no one was looking for me to be at Notre Dame one. Right. And there's a lot of kids like that. But how did I? Why is there a story there? Well, because everybody went through what I've been through. It's sure. everybody's story. Everybody's mm -hmm. story. So. I saw Rocky after I graduated, the movie Rocky. Mm -hmm. I studied that film over and over and over again. And I sat down and wrote Stallone a letter. I said, Mr. Stallone, I don't remember what I said, but I need to talk to you, something like that. Well, he, his office wrote me back. So it's not my cup of tea at this time. He's doing Rambo, clip, whatever. Okay. You know? <laughs> In 1993, the movie's over. Oh, Rudy's done. I, I'm cutting. I'm getting right. the case. And uh, sent, bring me out for a press junket. I don't know what a press junket is. I've never done this before, right? I just know I met the right people at the right time to get the right. movie made. And it was all timing. And Father Beauchamp was the right time to go get the approval from Notre I was Everything was timing, and God was on my side. Anyhow, I get 
to LA and we're going to the private airport to fly to Vegas to show our, sh what they call the trailers okay. to distribute. And as I walk into this private airport, I see Sylvester Stallone and John Travolta. <laughs> and I look at Sean Aston. I said, Sean, what is he doing here? Well, he's going with us. For what? Why? He said, well, they're mo whatever movie they're doing, it's part of the press junket. I said, oh, okay. And we walk in. I see Meg Ryan, Sleepless in Seattle. Right. And I'm getting all Google-eyed now, right? And uh, – and I should remember, Sean says, relax, dude. Because <laughs> right? I'm starstruck, right? Sure, of course. And, uh, but I, I got I to gotta relax. I got to relax. So we get to Vegas. They put you in the green room. You're in the green room with all these guys. And it's kind of like I, like I belong there. Mm. Like I'm part of them, right? Mm. If, you know that feeling you have? Yeah. Like when you went to know this is where I belong? Right. Uh, whether you believe it or not, I belong here, you know? The right. people who don't believe in you don't matter what they believe, right? right? Exactly. That's what I felt. And I didn't care what Stallone thought about me at that moment. But I didn't know this. I didn't know he wanted to meet me. Really? I didn't know that. No. And here's why. When you break the walls down in Hollywood and penetrate the big dogs like I did, okay, they're going to talk about you. They're going to say, man, you're just like Stallone. Man, you come out here just and you did you did Rudy like you did like Stallone did Rocky. Yeah, mm -hmm. those are the two movies that come together. They called Rocky of the nineties with Rudy, right? Mm -hmm. wow. And Stallone wanted to meet me, but he didn't show me he wanted to meet me right away. He wanted mm -hmm. to foster me. That's okay. So I walk over to him and Travolta. I had a Rudy hat. I said, Mr. Travolta, you can have this is for you. He said, Well, thank you. And Mr. Uh, Stallone, if you want one too, you can have one. And he took it, rolled it, put it on his head. I said, Well, right. I walked away. So that's it. That's all I needed. I don't need any more. He doesn't want to engage any camera. I'm done. Right. You know, at least I got to give him my hat, you know, right. whatever. Right. You know? So we go out into this, oh man, three thousand people are out there in this big uh, ballroom and the day I said Chubby Chase is the uh, master of ceremonies. They're going to show all the trailers. Okay. The, the first trailer they show was Cliffhanger. And I said, that's the one still on. And I go to myself, I don't belong here. <laughs> I hope they won't show Rudy. This, I'm going to be embarrassed. This is wow. You know, I'm looking at the magnitude of Cliffhanger. And sure. I said, I can't compete. You know how you get sometimes? Right. No, absolutely. Then they show, look who's talking now, uh, last action here, and then Rudy. I'm going, oh, I got my head down, but I, I looked up because the whole place went silent. Seriously. There was not a sound in that room. And I saw Stallone focused on that trailer. I said, wow, I think he likes it. <laughs> wow. So afterwards, uh, you go back in the room. Everybody's gone. I wanted to. I really wanted to see if he liked it. Right, right. Right. And he was nowhere to be found. So we're now we we have to go back. It's, come on, guys, we gotta go back. I'll never forget walking through Bally's and through the kitchens down where the limousines are. And as I walked outside, there's a limousine parked right outside where we're kind of going. And the door opens, and it's Rudy. You come with me. You're kidding. And it's still on. Right wow. now, I get in his limo. So you're flying with me, man. Now here's the deal. Once I got in that limousine, I was not nervous anymore. I was like part of him. We we're like brothers, man. I mean, it was that calming because he knew what I went through. And I knew what he went through. Sure. There was respect there, kind of like you and I. I respect you. You respect me. Mm -hmm. Even though you're the Outland Trophy guy, I'm the bag guy. I held the bag. <laughs> You're, uh, you know, you're the Chicago Bears Super Bowl. I mean, I'm Rudy, just the guy. That, but the, both the respects there, because right. they know that just going out there every day, you got to have a commitment, right? So they respect that, and that's what we respect. So we talked for about an hour on the plane, and I mean, we had some great conversation. We talked more about legacy. Okay. You know what we stood for. He said, "I don't stand for what you stand for, man." Because every you stand when they mention me, they know who you are. They mention me, they think of Rambo mm. or Rocky. I don't. Want, I don't want to be something. I want to stand for something like you. I said, "You do, man. That's why I'm here because of you." 
He said, thanks, you know? And he said, man, I hope I can get, you know, whatever, whatever. We had our conversations. We left in, I don't know, 1998, the big article came out, Cigar Aficionado. And this last question in it was to Stallone was, how do you want to be remembered? And you can look this up if you ever want. He says, I want to be remembered like my friend Rudy. He says, wow. not being dogmatic, pragmatic. I mean, that guy, that five foot six guy from Notre Dame, Dan Rudy Rudiger, he got the shit kicked out of him. He got his ass kicked, but he got up. He beat life down to a game, to a game in. That's how I want to be remembered. <laughs> wow. That's so great. Every, that's how you want to be remembered, coach. That's they, great. Look at, look at. When they mentioned Chris Orich, Rudy Rudiger, you know, Sylvester Stallone, look at that guy never gave up. Sure. Well, and, and the here's the thing. So through that experience, what do you think kind of you learned about kind of what the process was to get Rudy made? You know, well, you process, know ups and downs. Yeah, Chris, the process, you change. You know, I like you. Thanks for bringing that up. The process changes, as you know. Okay. You have to adapt to the process. Mm -hmm. Never lose focus on the goal. That's see, we go down this process, it changes 10 times. But you know, and you gotta find another way to get there. And that's what the movie represents. There's always another way, guys. If they say you have to take an SAT, go to the junior college. Right. Well, you're not you're smart, man. You're saving money. You're proving yourself. You transfer in. The end result is a degree from the University of Notre Dame. It's right. not how you started, man. It's how you end up. And right. that's how they see it, right? And, and, and by the way, Rocky, um, you know, you, you mentioned this, Rocky Blyer, earlier. Uh -huh. I went to him to see what it takes to get a movie made. He was so gracious, so nice, okay. so generous, because he had a movie of his life. Yeah, yeah. And he said, well, my movie's TV movie, and they didn't consult me. So he taught me a lesson. Take control of your story, Drew, Rudy. Okay. And that's what I had to do, you know. Okay. Uh, take control, find the right team, very important, put the right elements together. How I saw Rocky, I wanted Rudy like that. Mm. You know? Well, and you know, it is, it, it, when you talk about iconic sports movies. Right. Um, you know, obviously Hoosiers, the idea that you're now in that realm, um, right. I mean, do you feel kind of a, a the pressure of responsibility? No, that no I don't take myself serious, but I take that message very serious. Uh -huh. You know, so that's a whole. I don't, I don't look at myself as a celebrity. Mm -hmm. But if someone asks me for an autograph, yes, I respect that. I'll give you one. Sure. Someone said, oh, wow, you're Rudy. What you did. I have to listen to that and respect that. But I'm not full of myself like I used to be, Chris. Really? We all go there, brother. Tell you me know that. We Tell all go that. there. Yeah. Well, Tell after me. the movie, you think you're a big shot. Okay. You know, you think you're somebody, invincible type of feeling. And you're going to get knocked down. And you better be ready for that. <laughs> you know, and I got knocked down pretty hard, but I, I knew, boy, I needed this. So we mm -hmm. all need that awakening. Because no matter who you are, you're a human being. Sure, right. Remember right. that. And you're going to make mistakes. That doesn't mean you're a bad guy. You just mm -hmm. made a mistake. You sure. know, I'm going to tell you a story. This is kind of, I'm signing autographs about three weeks ago. Okay. No Jay's in the room. Okay. And I'm going to myself, wow, why am I in a room with him? <laughs> right? And I'm not feeling good about it. But I said, I got to accept it. He's here. One of his best friends helped with the movie, AJ, AC okay. Collins. Okay. Good guy. He and I were close. And that's one of his OJ's buddies. Uh -huh. Watch this. Never judge people. Number one. Right. Not judging. After he signed all his stuff, he comes walking over in reverence with his hands folded. He said, thank you, Rudy. I needed Rudy. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. That's what he kept saying. <laughs> That's what I said. What? What is he saying to me? It's a redemption moment mm. is what it is. And you have to recognize that with people. When Jesus died on the cross, he, he gave a redemption moment to that 
bad guy. And all his apostles were bad guys, by the way. They were not good guys. They were criminals, right? So we can't judge. We're not here to judge. Right. We, we're here to forgive. You know, I, I'll not, I had to forgive a lot of my bad guys who tried to take advantage of me. I forgave them the day they did it, and I went on and let them pay the price for what they needed to pay it for. But right. I'm not getting into that. My whole point is we go through all that because we lose our moral compass. We lose that. Get your moral compass back, guys, mm -hmm. and you'll be fine. Don't football. And all the money these guys make, I, you know, it, money is not your answer to happiness. Right. right. It's your character. Right. It's right. your character. Money will come. You take care of yourself. God will make sure you're there to get the right mindset and all that. You know, I, look, I meet, I met a, a homeless woman about three years ago. Okay. I'm going down and I live in Las Vegas. I'm going to go down to the shelter there to speak to the homeless girls. Okay. I didn't really want to go, Chris. Really? I don't know what to say to these girls. What the heck am I going to say to a girl that was abused and beaten up and alcohol and drugs? Come on. I, and and, and uh, my, Cheryl, my ex-wife now, great woman, she said, you need to go. Okay. So I went. I didn't know they showed the movie to these girls. Wow. Right? I didn't know that. Uh, I don't know. I wish I had the letter in front. Anyhow, make a long story short. About eight months ago, I found a letter that was given to me at that session okay. in, in 19, um, 2014, right? Okay. I never read the letter, Chris. I put it in my coat pocket. Now, you ready for this? As I finished speaking, it was awesome. The girls really enjoyed them. I mean, there were 50 of them. And they were happy and excited to see me and, and they gave me, oh, thank you, thank you, Rudy. But I didn't, didn't know how to respond to that. Maybe they're just saying that. But about three years ago, I walked into an antique shop here in Boulder City. Okay. And this girl, Rudy, Rudy, you're my hero. Oh, my God. She goes, it's Rudy, guys. It's Rudy. She kept going. I said, what? What the heck? You know? So, oh, my God. It, I'm the one that gave you that letter, Rudy. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. I was so embarrassed, Chris. I didn't want to tell her I didn't read the letter. Right. Right. And she said, Rudy, my God, you were my hero. When I was, I was at Portland University, my boyfriend wanted me to watch this movie, football movie. I said, no, no. I don't want to see it. I don't want a sports movie. But I watched it, and I wept like a baby, and blah, blah, blah. Then I, later, I got mixed up with the wrong guy, got divorced. Um, my husband kidnapped my kids, you know. And I'm out here, I was thrown out of my house, blah, blah, blah. I said, oh, my God. And uh, it's all in her letter. She's telling me, but you, Rudy, I'm back on track. Now I'm the manager of this antique shop. I'm getting wow. my kids back because of you. I changed my attitude. So, and I go to myself. I didn't read her letter. Mm. My glad I found that letter. Everything mm. she said was in that letter, you know. Wow. And I'm going to myself. Why was Rudy made? It wasn't made to show I played football. Mm -hmm. It was made to give people hope, to give people a purpose, to give people say, I can do that too. And that's why I was trying to tell the big shots at Notre Dame, but it was one guy who understood it was Father William Beauchamp. Mm -hmm. He got it. He's the one who approved it. And oh. Father Joyce and Father Hesburgh got it. Mm -hmm. But the other boneheads didn't. And I call them bonehead because they are. Right? Wow. But the boneheads became real cool people after that. Mm. After they saw. So you could be a bonehead, but you can change. Does that make sense? Right. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And they change and they're great people. they they just have to bring we all have that in us. Mm -hmm. We just gotta bring it out. Sometimes you gotta work a little different. And, and all I'm saying, even though you're rejected, that doesn't mean they're bad people. Even right. though they're you know, they're good people. Notre Dame's a wonderful place. And it's just sometimes you get these guys who are full of themselves, like I was. <laughs> we all did. You know. You're right. You're right. You're right. Well, and, and here's this is something really interesting. And I think that it, it kind of shows what happened in 93 with your movie. And then in 2017, you guys put together a documentary. Right. And it's called Rudy Rudy, You're the Walkout. Correct. And 
Can you share with a little share with us a little bit about kind of why you wanted to do yeah, that? Yeah, here's why I wanted to do it, Chris. Uh, I was a little overweight at the time. I wanted to change my life. Today, I'm 30 pounds lighter, better shape. There you go. All right. And, uh, yeah, and because uh, I had to get myself in better shape, you know, physically and for my kids and everything. Sure. And, uh, but there, as I was doing that documentary, everyone wanted to know how to get the movie made. So I wanted to tell them. Okay. I wanted to show them. I wanted to walk through the, the uh, stations of the cross as I walked through to from St. Joe Hall over the Holy Cross Junior College. Right. What it felt like. Then you hit that campus and you got all of a sudden responsibility hit. <laughs> gotta go to class. Right. Oh, right. I gotta go to class. <laughs> I gotta study. But man, I was in that dream world as you walk on that calm lake, you know? Mm -hmm. I wanna give the people that experience. Okay. And show them how wonderful the kids are at Notre Dame. And show how great Great. There's a lot of gratitude. A lot of kids here work their butts off to get their parents on second and third mortgages to get their right. kids at Notre Dame. Right. And great kids on the football team have great attitude, great gracious. I mean, I, I wanted to show that. That's mm -hmm. the reason why. Well, and it, it's really interesting because what and it's really taking a look kind of obviously what happened after the movie, but more importantly, it, it shows kind of the relationships of folks you've had since the movie. And right. it, I think it was great because we had a chance to kind of listen to your brothers and it was great because, yeah. you know, they were kind of shying you and, you know, kind of messing with you and stuff like that. But it's great because all we saw in the movie was this kid, he had a change, he got his play and then it was over. But yeah. talking about the, the, the Rick Rudiger, the walk-on kind of gave us life after and, and I thought that was so interesting because it talked about not only how the movie was made, but those relationships. It went deeper, and yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that was great. And you know that that's the brotherhood I was talking about, Chris, earlier. That's what's there in that locker room with that mm -hmm. teammate. They would sacrifice for you. That's what Pat Sarg did. Now right. you think about that, right? It's like Ronnie Collins. He's the one who carried me off the field. He's, you know, he's the first ones there. And uh, Howard Meyer, uh, golly, man, Teddy Bergmeyer. Uh, I go, you know, all these guys that carried me off the field, only a handful of guys. Right. And, and as they picked me up, I said, drop me, man, this is embarrassing. I was embarrassed. I said, no, man, you're going all the way to the tunnel. And, and, and I'll never forget walking into the locker room and, and Divine says to me, Rudy, you need to say something to the team. And all I said was, man, I've been waiting for this my whole life. We use that in a movie, you know. Mm. And, and I'll never forget the team captains made me take the team out in the field, too, as well. And we got actual pictures of that. But those were great moments, you know. Those were the moments that are special. You know what it's like running out of that town in front of 60,000 people, cheering for all the kids, and you're one of them? Man, your adrenaline's high. And you could run through that tunnel. Man, I, I run through that wall. You could do anything. You got that feeling. Sure. But it's a little different today, Coach. Right, yeah. A little different yeah. today. They're running for NFL. Mm -hmm. They're running for the paycheck. Yeah. What about the tradition? What about yeah. the guys at Chris Storage, the team in the tradition Chris Storage built here? You know? What about, you know, all the great ones that played here? Tommy Clemens or Joe Montana's, you know, they don't mm -hmm. see that. And look, we're playing to, from who built this place. Right. You know, that's who we're playing for. You know, we showed the locker room in the movie like you're a ghost in the movie. Like you walk in the locker room, you could feel the, the spirit of these guys. And I did. And I wanted to bring that out, you know. <laughs> we used that in the movie. Also, we used to give the go, go, go. We're going to get an all inside of mouth. Right, right, right. we, right. we used to play that all the time in the backyard and on Saturdays, you know, before a Notre Dame game. Because <laughs> we listened to the record. And on Sunday, we'd we watch a Notre Dame game and got two victories on a weekend if mm -hmm. they won. So well, it was just so There's crazy. something that's interesting. I wanted to talk about both uh, Pat Sarb and Ross Browner. And, and yeah. can you share with us a little bit about kind of how their experience affected you? Because I don't think a lot of people really, I didn't know it until I, I yeah. saw the documentary. Well, well Ross, I, I, I went through the individual drills with every day. Okay. And that's where he respected me. We went down to our breakdown 
offensive defensive personal personal drills and I they put me with the defensive line and boy I got Browner and Bob Golick and all these guys hitting the hell out of me. Golick was like hitting a tree. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I try to avoid that guy. And uh but Brown and all those guys you had to hit the you know he was awesome. He would always say well always complimented me. Mm. I loved him. Always mm. complimented me. And and uh I always say, way to go. That's a great hit. You know, things, just little things that kept me in the game, you know. Wow. Instead of the guy saying, what are you doing out here? <laughs> right. Why are you out here, old man? <laughs> you get right. back to Browner and all those guys. You went, you, that's, you got your respect through the individual drills. Right. Right. That's, that's, you that's true. Respect, you know, the gauntlet, the bowl, the ring. Right. That's where you earn your, you know, your spurs and your whiskers with the teammates. And, and so it was awesome. And that's where I earned it. So Ross Bronner was a uh, human being, by the way, who I also helped after he had to come back to Notre Dame, made a couple interesting mistakes. But mm -hmm. he came back, won a national championship. And I love him for it. He has a, you know, has a great – and Willie Fry, who passed away, you know, was a good friend of mine too. Okay. He okay. was one of the – Guys would always come up to me and talk to me, and he was an intellectual type of guy. He wanted right. to know the worldly things. <laughs> you know, he, what was the Navy like? Think he wanted to get to right. know me, right? He wanted to know what my dreams were. You know, and I said, I "Just want to play," and th they understood that. You got it, right? And those are guys who cheered for you. Browner's the one. Get get him in the game. Get him in the game. They're, get going for me. Play him. Play him. I don't even wow. know how to play defensive. I don't know any plays. <laughs> oh, simple, right? Move on the ball, dude. Go get the guy who's got the ball. <laughs> oh my god, that is hilarious. Yeah. That is absolutely. Well, that's hilarious. how it happens. And and I'll never forget Pat. You know, he didn't dress for his senior day, but he gave up his uniform for me. Mm. And, and I love him for that. And I don't know. You know, I didn't know he did that. I don't know who did that. Really? No. Because when they wow. did it, you don't know. Right. If Divine made a, a housekeeping uh, announcement at the end of practice. Thank God I went back out. Right? And that couple guys were looking for me. Where the hell you been? I said, well, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's just walk through. Right, right. right. No hitting her. It's just a walk right. through. And no big deal and oh no man you could you know they knew they were going to surprise me and they wanted me there mm. we showed that in a movie too so wow. well i think what's what's interesting is that now was it his son or his son his went on to notre dame wore number okay. 45 as a walk-on is a uh Awesome doctor today. Went in the uh, Air Force after Notre Dame. That's that's amazing story. It was that's a pay it forward story. type of thing. Right. Yeah. Right. So what to me that was? How can you say? What could you say to that? Right. You know. You know. I think about all the people who tried to stop me. I'm glad I didn't let them. Because mm. of people like that. You, does that make sense? Like Colby absolutely. Ryan. Yeah. Absolutely. Ronner, Ronnie you know, Collins, all these guys even go on. I go on. I, I go on and on with people, movie actors, Stallone, all the. What if I would have quit? Mm -hmm. I would never have with you. Right. This was a great moment for me to talk to you. <laughs> no, I know you're a humble man, but you're the guy. You know, they, you, they only, people only knew out there in the world, they, they know. Chris is you're more than a Chicago Bear, and you're more than a Notre Dame graduate. You're well, a hell, of, hell of a guy. Here's what is so interesting when you look at, and you mentioned this before, how your story, the Rudy story, is an every man story. Right. And that I think is what really kind of gets you right. I don't. You don't have to be a football guy. You don't have to be right. a sports guy. You could be. Uh, I mean, and, and you've seen it, right? You could be. Uh, a Fortune 500 company. I mean, yeah. what your message says is really kind of allows everyone to get that strength and find it within themselves. And I think that's that's what's so amazing what you've done, but more importantly, you've shared the story with thousands and thousands of people after the movie, right? So, I mean, talk a little bit about kind of 
what the the stories you've heard from young people, from business executives, and really how you've changed your lives. Oh, I heard from kids who wanted to commit suicide who didn't, right? Wow. Uh, wow. From a, a military standpoint, uh, uh, Green Beret, who, who became Special Forces, Green Beret, because of the movie Rudy. Okay. He grew up in a trailer park. Two things you would watch would be professional wrestling and Rudy, as his mother was a meth dealer. and uh, But, man, he got himself and became a leader in the military. He's still a leader as of this day. And you hear those stories, and you go, and you hear people, this is interesting. I'm not going to mention, but on radio shows, put the movie down. Oh, that, that wasn't, you know, whatever they say. I go, wow. <laughs> that, that poor guy didn't get it. You know? right, exactly, exactly. You know, he, he is so, he's so caught up in celebrity status and all this other stuff. I said, why doesn't he get it? And the reason is because he's, He's not tuned into that. Sure. But the people who are tuned into it, they're the ones who help those people realize they should get tuned into that. And that's where it ha that's why you don't give up on anybody because everybody has that in them to do well. So through the over the years and the individuals you've met, um, what um, I want, want to ask you this question as far as a mentor a mentor goes for you. I mean, who, who had the biggest influence on you? You know, as, Chris, as a mentor? I, you know, I, I, there's not one to be honest today. It could be what it could be someone today. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, that gives me the influence. Uh, I don't like saying this guy was, but you know, my creator is my biggest influence. God, sure. Jesus Christ. I mean, uh, if you don't have faith, I don't know how you can do this. Right. You got to believe in something. I don't care what it's like. Very true. Very true. What we have some belief, and, and I don't know how you can make it without that. That's my well, big influence. And I think what's what's also interesting, and I want to talk about your podcast, Rise Above with Rudy, because mm -hmm. you have a chance to kind of share not only your story but other people's stories. And I've had a chance to to listen to several of them and they're great and and, and i say because and, and i say this because they aren't the the guests you have aren't they're not football people they're psychologists they're they're they're, they're self-help people they're they're military people yeah. and they have a story too so can you tell a little bit about yeah how you started the podcast and, and talk about some of your guests yeah of course you know the reason why the podcast was started was a, a gentleman who i teamed up with by the way, the Joe Gardner, he's a okay. uh, Times uh, bestseller, New York bestseller, great guy. And he just had great heart, great feeling. And I said, we got to do Rudy moments, man. And we got to find those other Rudys. So let's do it. And that's how it all started. I mean, my goodness, I can go from guest to guest to guest to guest. This last couple ones, I was this one girl who coached at UCLA, never knew anything about gymnastics. Wow. And she won like 10 championships. <laughs> That's I was like, what the heck? Listen to that. <laughs> he said, it was a mindset. It's not about, Rudy, after listening to what you do and what you talk about, it's no different. I didn't, I didn't have to know anything about gymnastics. I hired people that knew. But my job was to create a mindset with these young girls that mm. they can do whatever they want to do. And that was my gift to them. Uh, I failed the first couple of years. They judged me on my record. <laughs> <laughs> Not good. But after I, they realized, ah, maybe you could stick around, then I start telling them why I should be here to build young ladies and not worried about ch championships come because of that. Wow. You know, I thought that that's a great podcast. Diane Hassey, the sprint. Head of Sprint, the CEO of Sprint, was given the CEO job when it was bankrupt. Mm. The guy comes in, says his first day on the job, gives him the bankruptcy letter. He said, "Why are you giving me that?" He said, "We're going bankrupt." He said, "You don't have a job anymore because we're not going bankrupt." He turned that company to be the best company in the world in eight years. Think about that. 
Wow. He, he did it by developing culture, not having negative people in his culture. Right. right. That was the difference. He built a beautiful campus. It was like a college campus. I mean, he's all, both of his kids went to Notre Dame. In fact, he had me uh, write a letter for his kid to get to Notre Dame. He said, you're kidding, Dan. Me? Write a letter for your kid? Oh, well, he says, I'll be honored. <laughs> so I'm, I'm honored at the fact you asked me, you know. But, you know, those are some of the ones, and there are many more. And, mm -hmm. and, and we just, and, oh, my gosh, we just did a guy I tried to get in touch with 20-some years ago. He developed muscle now, you know. Okay. I didn't know he wanted to meet me. Uh, he has a great story. Uh, he, he developed all this nutrition for the astronauts. And he okay. taught all right. the answers right in front of nutrition for people. So he, he he adopted a young boy from Guatemala, and you know they grow short. The kid's six foot two today. Wow! Because of muscle milk. Wow! And I have a cheese company in Wisconsin. I'm connected with, and and the farmer I'm connected with, and a cheese broker, while developing the power of milk, what milk can do for you. Mm. It's not just eating Cheerios with milk. It has much <laughs> more power, you know. We're, putting that science to it. So it's all good. That is terrific. And one of the things, we're about to close up now, but okay. one of the things I, I, I want to kind of know, and and you've had some very memorable moments on Notre Dame's campus. And I want to know, was there a time, this has nothing to do with athletics or football or, or anything like that, that you find yourself maybe at the grotto or just kind of find yourself where you, you kind of had that moment of, you know, so, wow, I made this. Oh, I made um, this. Okay. Yeah, please. I mean, I would love yeah, to hear yeah, that. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Uh, the day I get in Notre Dame, mm. the letter, i never forget going to the grotto, going to the basilica, and just sit there and say, I made it. Wow. This is awesome. Now I'm part of this. This is all. Oh, I'm all part of this. This is awesome. And I was just taking it all in. Every, you know, the, and you sit there at the ground. I'm not, I don't have to ask, please help me anymore. I help myself. Mm. And by the way, that's why we used the line in the movie. Have I prayed hard enough, Father? No, I don't think that's the answer, son. Wow. <laughs> it's true incomparable fact. There is a God and I'm not him. Well, always asking God for favors. Do the work. Right. Do the exactly. work. Exactly. Get exactly. beat up and get back People up. Forget. People forget. Right. About it. right. Do forget. the work. You know, you, you stick in there. You'll find a way. That's what we're telling people. You will find a way. Mm. Mm. And here's, here's my last question. Okay. Throughout this whole experience for you, um, you've kind of had a chance to kind of see some amazing things. Um, I mean, what do you like best about the success you had after Rudy. Uh, well, well, the well, success well, you had after you graduated. Okay. Well, okay. In fifth grade, I was asked to study the five presidents. That was my homework assignment. I didn't study them. I went home and played baseball instead. And the teacher picked on me right away when I come to school because she knew I didn't study. And she made me sit in back of the room because I didn't study. The greatest joy was invited to the White House to show the movie Rudy. Okay. In 1993. After that, I met four presidents after that. And they're no different than you and I. Just as natural as they may be projected as different people. Sure. They, they put, they're just like you and I, man. That's what we have to remember. Wow. Wow. That is awesome. Yeah, you're awesome. Well, thank you so much, man. Thank this you, is exciting for me. It's been man. a great, great time with you. Well, let's, you know, keep in touch with me, brother. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. I'd like to thank everyone watching on YouTube and also Facebook. And most of all, my wonderful uh, wife and daughter crew of Candy and Kylie, who produced and directed today's show. Oh, no kidding. Uh, this podcast, along with my other ones, could be seen at Chris Zorch 50 at YouTube. And please hit the subscribe button. Rudy, this was awesome, man. Thank you so yeah, much. Bro, I really bro, I'm it. gonna go finish unpacking now, brother. This is a blast, man. <laughs> Thank you so much. Love I really appreciate everything. Thank you, All bro. Right. Love you too. All, All right, right, buddy. All right. Bye -bye. Bye.
Bye.